for a really long time. Like I definitely identify as an artist and I really struggle with like this new move toward content creation. What is art and what is content creation? And I don't want to be a content creator, I want to be an artist. And so that's something that's really held me back from making a YouTube channel. Like I said, I've really wanted to make one for so long. I've always like really loved making things and creating things. And I think what is cool about YouTube is that like you can just create things and not have it be like huge projects. Like I have a short film I'm working on that I'm writing and I wanna get grant money for and like do that stuff. But I feel like on a day-to-day -day basis, like YouTube might allow me to kind of just be creative and be practicing editing through kind of a different form of storytelling. And I'm really curious to see ways that like I can use this platform in a way that like affirms me as an artist rather than like have this attitude oh, well, if I have a YouTube, it's like I'm not an artist anymore. I don't know exactly, like, what content this channel will eventually evolve into. I'm very open to kind of the first few months of this channel being, like, me just figuring things out and what works, what doesn't, what stuff I am interested in making and what I'm not interested in making. And I'm really just committing to letting that be, like, a process and not feeling like I need to figure everything out from the get-go. I thought that a, an interesting, fun first video to kind of get to know me a bit better would be sharing what my current favorites are. So I did some beauty favorites, some book recommendations, and some TV recommendations. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope some of that just made sense, but um, if it didn't, please hear, stay. Please stay. Please stay and watch, watch me talk about things. Okay. It looks so red. Let's just get, let's just, this is so weird. Do I look in the camera? Do I look in the viewfinder? I can't stop looking at myself. Is this a problem? Let me know. I'm so bad at this. I'm so bad at this. Okay, yes. I'm gonna start out with some of my favorite products, let's get into it. Okay, so the first two products um, were recommended by my favorite influencer and really the only person whose opinion I value, and that's Lisa Vanderpump. She's disgustingly wealthy. And these two products are extremely affordable, and she highly recommends them. So the first is this Whey Finishing Cream. Um, and I've just been kind of putting it on my hair after I wash it and like before I use heat on it and it just kind of smells really nice and like you only need like a little bit it's great the next is this um nail envy opi nail strengthener come on come on there okay there it is yes i started using this because i'm an actor as i stated previously nine times out of ten I'll get booked on something and then I'll have to take off my fake nails and then my nails will look like stubs because most characters like they just want like clean no nail polish looks. I started using this because I wanted my nails to just be like healthy and grow fast and so that like when I am on call for like a part or something I could just go in and like have healthy nails. Here's my nail. I've really grown my nails out pretty long. I actually, well, I just broke this one just 
because I was dancing in the shower and like I like got a little out of control but like that's like a me problem like this is, this really holds up and like I people I feel like rarely break their nails on it and it just really strengthens your nail and so if you're looking to like stop paying so much money on fake nails and you want to grow out your own nails like this is a great first step um you could put it like under your nail polish or just wear it clear and it just makes your nails look really clean and really strong those are, those are my two lvp picks the next thing i've really been enjoying are these like dermablades i was doing a film and the hair and makeup person just like dermabladed my whole face and i was like are you kidding me my skin was so smooth after this i think it like exfoliates your skin but it also just like takes off like any peach fuzz if you have like some sideburns coming in you can get take that off the most that i use it for honestly is like my mustache because i used to wax every like two weeks and that's just not good for your skin and so using this has been such a lifesaver and i also use it on like my arms now and my stomach which i don't know if that's actually good but um it seems to work and the hair doesn't really grow back super thick and it's just very easy i don't know it's like a no-brainer like if you have any little body hairs that you're trying to get rid of i highly recommend this um and your skin is just like so smooth after you do it yeah i got these on amazon and they come in like a few little different sizes my next thing that i use everyone talks about these the gua sha i left this at my mom's house for like two months and when i tell you like i saw such a difference in my skin i didn't want to buy a new one because it was like I don't know, like $35. I don't really just want to spend money because I left it somewhere. So I just didn't wash on my face for two months. It really just helps, I feel like, get the products like into your face and into your skin. It gets the blood going. I do it every morning. Sometimes I do it at night, but I always do it in the morning because I just feel like it's a way to like wake up your face. Another thing I've really been loving is just, in general, vitamin C serum in the morning. The Glow Recipe. Guava Vitamin C Dark Spot Serum. This is like not the most expensive vitamin C serum, but it's definitely not the cheapest. I would just really, really recommend incorporating vitamin C into your morning skincare routine. It has made such a difference. Just incorporating vitamin C into your morning routine, it gets rid of dark spots. It kind of just like brightens your face. It's really good for your skin. So yeah, been enjoying that. I, during the pandemic, I like just went on an essential oils kick. Today, I just kind of want to talk about like my kind of everyday things that I use essential oils wise that um, you might not necessarily like think of when you think of essential oils. One is orange, this orange one. I put a drop on my toothpaste because it is a natural teeth whitener. I do not like chemically whitening my teeth. That like super, super white teeth look just like looks creepy to me i use this every morning in my toothpaste just to drop and then i also drink my coffee and red wine out of a straw because that stains your teeth and sometimes even tea i'll drink out of a straw so i find that the combo of those two things is great if you're also like me and don't like that like super super white look orange essential oil this one is like cheap because it's orange frankincense is not that cheap i think this bottle is like 70 dollars but I will say it lasts so long. I just use a drop of it in my moisturizer maybe like once every three nights. It's just so, so good for your skin. Uh, and it also smells really, really good. It has like a very like grounding effect, which is nice um, to kind of incorporate into your nighttime skincare routine because at night you're trying to wind down and ground and stuff like that. This is definitely worth the investment and because I only use a literal drop of this like once every three nights. It lasts probably more than a year. And then the other two things that I use on a daily basis, uh, essential oil-wise, are these two roll-ons. They're from Young Living. Deep... Uh, uh, uh. So this is called Stress Away. I basically use this as a perfume day to day. If I'm going out for like dinner or something, I'll wear like an actual perfume. It smells like vanilla and lime, which kind of smells like a vacation. Jean-Luc, my boyfriend, loves the smell of it i love the smell of it i'll just roll like a little behind my ears a little on my wrists and it just smells really good and then this deep relief has like peppermint and like winter green in it i think and every morning i'll put it on my temples and like a little underneath my nose just because it it kind of has this like cooling sensation and it smells like peppermint and just kind of wakes me up when i have headaches throughout the day sometimes i'll put it like here too or like behind my neck depending on like what my needs are <clears throat> a moisturizer i've been loving is this tatcha 
dewy skin cream. Okay, it's a decent size. And um, I will say if you have like really oily skin or you don't like really heavy moisturizers, this is probably not for you. I put it on and I'll like gua sha it in and it just, it's like so, 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 so hydrating. I mean, it's literally called dewy skin cream. You just look dewy after and it just feels like your skin is like getting everything that it needs. Uh, and then, um, I feel like these are highly recommended, but I've kind of recently upgraded my face makeup. This one is always, always highly recommended. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I'm wearing it now underneath my foundation and I just apply it with a beauty blender. I don't always wear it with foundation. Oftentimes I'll wear it by itself, put on some concealer. It doesn't have like the best coverage if that's what you're looking for, but it really just makes you look like red carpet ready. Cannot say enough great things about this. After this, I'll put on this NARS um, Light Reflecting Foundation. I think this might be newer. These two are a great combination. My skin always looks just like so great. And I'll use the Charlotte Tilbury powder with a beauty blender and just put a little like under my eyes and like in my T-zone and stuff. This is just, I cannot recommend it enough, especially using a beauty blender to apply it. I feel like when I apply powder with brushes, I just look like really cakey and this just, it just hits different when you use a beauty blender. The last beauty recommendation for the day. I've been really, really, really obsessed with Paula's Choice products. If you're looking to invest in your skincare at all and looking to splurge, these are the products to splurge on. First is their liquid exfoliant. I use maybe like two times a week during my nightly skincare routine, after toner and before like oils and serums. I've seen a difference and it works really well. Um, the second is the 1% retinol treatment with peptides and vitamin C. Do not use this on the same night that you use the exfoliator. And when you're introducing this into your skincare routine, just use it once a week and then after like you feel comfortable with that, then you could try twice a week. Some people end up using it every day. I basically will do like one night of this, one night of this, one night off, repeat. And same with this one, I use it after my toner and before my oils and serums. You might notice like your face gets like super dry after you first use it, in which case give yourself like a little over a week off maybe before you try it again, but it is normal. When I do have retinol nights, I'll also use this Sunday Riley um, retinol eye cream. I love it. It's expensive as well. If you are looking to splurge, these are the products that are worth splurging on. Um, yeah, and that's it for products. Let's move on to books. Let's move on to books. This video is so much longer than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so these are like some summer book recommendations by genre. I really got into reading the beginning of the year and I've been reading on average a book a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. So first we have the thriller genre. Who is Maud Dixon? This is a great thriller. It's very fast paced and at the bookstore the people were like, that's a good pick. So yeah, this is great. Next is The Golden Couple. This was one of my book of the month picks. Also read through it pretty quickly. I don't wanna say there's a twist at the end cause like, of course there's a twist at the end, it's a thriller. Verity by Colleen Hoover. I read it very quickly. It's great. The end is, yeah, yeah. And then this, this is like my favorite book that I've read since I really started getting back into reading. I literally read it in one sitting. It was so good. Like, it was so good. I cannot recommend this enough. Next category is nonfiction. I started off with My Body by Emily Radek. Radikowski. It was just such a beautiful, like, beautifully honest portrayal of her experiences. She didn't really portray herself as, like, the best. She didn't portray people in her life as the best. She gave an honest portrayal of, like, her experiences as a woman, a, you know, that looks a certain way in this industry. It was a very fast read. The letters were very big, so if you're trying to get into nonfiction, but you aren't looking for something like super dense. This was a quick read. I definitely recommend that. Another book I recommend is Between the World and Me by ta Coates. I read this in college. Similarly, like the pages are 
like it's it's also a pretty quick read i definitely recommend it if you're like a white american it gives such an important perspective of the black experience in this country and just like day to day what it's like and i think it's such 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 an important book to read next book is attached this is you know people talk about this book it's about adult attachment styles it focuses mainly on like romantic relationships and like how it could be related to how you were treated like by your parents but i think it can be like applied to other types of relationships too like your boss or maybe some friends i think even if you do have more of a secure attachment style this is just a helpful book to read because you're going to meet people that don't have a secure attachment style so it kind of just help you really understand how people experience relationships if it's different from you and if you do have an anxious or avoidant attachment style it's just really helpful this book was so helpful to like because i am now a more secure but like i used to be very anxious and so just kind of like understanding that really helps you kind of like overcome it and then the last one is atomic habits which my boyfriend took with him to work today it's such a good book i am someone that has really good habits and i have really good time management but even so i found it so important for me to read honestly like i feel like it's the reason i'm making this video making a youtube channel there are so many great takeaways from it and i definitely recommend it if you're kind of looking to like self-start something or make your life easier through building better habits the next genre is sort of like a combo between like drama and like romance anything by taylor jenkins reed but specifically um, seven husbands of evelyn hugo which i gave away Daisy Jones and the Six, and Malibu Rising. Those three books are so great if you just kind of want to like get back into reading and like flip through something. And then of course, anything Colleen Hoover is amazing. If you're looking to get back into reading, Colleen Hoover is your girl. I think the first one I read was actually Verity, but that's, she typically doesn't write thrillers. She writes more like dramas like family dramas like romance kind of or like broken romances i read it ends with us which you know everyone's everyone talked about this it's a great book trigger warning domestic abuse highly recommend heart bones which is such a good summer read it doesn't really look like it from the cover but it's such a good summer read i like loved this book i wasn't really expecting anything from it because a lot of people don't talk about it but i really loved it and then i read reminders of him which i gave to my mom that one might be my favorite i loved that book so much. I wept like a baby. You should read that book as soon as you can. And then I'm reading November 9th, which is a little bit more like young adult. I feel like a little like older than this story, but I still am like going through it pretty quickly and love it because I love her and her writing style is just fantastic. So those are kind of just like after reading for six months straight, some of my favorite book recommendations. I've been watching other people's videos, going on Instagram and like book talk and stuff to see what everyone else's recommendations were so that's kind of just a cohesive my favorites from all of the rage that everybody is talking about and then last i just want to talk about a few tv shows that i've been liking definitely my recommendations here are all over the place i highly recommend yellow jackets i cannot wait for season two to come out it's like a thriller like mystery it's about this soccer team of young women that ends up in a plane crash deserted in the woods for i think like 19 months and it goes back and forth time wise between them being stuck in the woods and like the, the women that survived and like where they are now juliette lewis christina ricci the young cast is amazing it's a great show it's on showtime then there's severance if you are looking for a good tv show severance is for you it is on apple tv it's basically such a beautiful like symbolic allegorical way of talking about our relationship to work and how like employers are abusive how employees view themselves how bad work culture is how how bad for like your mental health the way that we think about work is it's such a brilliant idea and i <laughs> I'm on like such a cliffhanger from the first season. The second season cannot come out fast enough. It has been so long since I have felt this excited about a TV show. Honestly, since like Jessica Lang left American Horror Story, which is really saying something. Patricia Arquette is so good. Yeah, everyone's great. It's just such a good idea. I love it. Oh my god, and Christopher Walken is in it, and he's just like 
being Christopher Walken and it's amazing. The Staircase on HBO, shameless plug because Jean-Luc is actually in it. He plays Juliette Binoche's assistant. If you're into true crime, this is the show for you. It's based off of the documentary that was made about a guy that may or may not have pushed his wife down the stairs and may or may not have pushed somebody else down the stairs in the 80s. It's just a good show with like amazing actors. Colin Firth, Tony Collette, Juliette Binoche, <laughs> literally like <laughs> all these like non-American actors just slaying American characters. Sophie Turner, um, Odessa somebody, she's so good. I will say like major trigger warning for domestic abuse and violence and just like it's, it's a lot. I had to close my eyes at some parts. Oh my god! There's parts that were left out of the documentary that like are explored in the show, i.e. the editor of the documentary had a romantic relationship with the guy that was on trial and like they don't say that in the documentary which is obviously like uh not good so that's super dramatic and fun this is kind of an old i think it was last year mayor of east town is such a good like character study mystery thriller it's a mini series so i think it's like seven or eight episodes so you can get through it pretty quickly kate winslet evan peters kate winslet is so good she i think she and evan peters might have both won the emmy i know evan peters won the emmy for it um i'm pretty sure kate winslet won the emmy <laughs> and then um yeah. vanderpump rules especially for the summer just go like watch like seasons like one through five and thank me later i'm very affected as we all are by just everything that goes on in the world and it's exhausting and working and like checking the news and everything it can be really overwhelming and sometimes like right after i'm done with work i can't just like go into a tv show like the staircase or severance and i usually watch vanderpump rules or real housewives of beverly hills and i will literally just scrub through and watch these vanderpump scenes for the purposes of this video i just recommend vanderpump rules it's such a good like summer show if you want to turn off your brain and like feel like people have problems that don't matter you want to like live in that world pump rules and i can't wait for it to come back <laughs> there's a lot of messy breakups that have happened since the last season i'm really excited to see what ensues that's um that's it thank you for watching i'm really excited for this channel i have no idea what's gonna be next but please actually i do that's a lie but please stay tuned like comment subscribe like if you want to um thanks for watching and i'll see you next week bye